Hello, teacher. I apologize for bothering you, but I really need your assistance, please. Hello, Robert. I'm sorry, but I'm running late for my next class. Maybe we can chat some other time. Please, just a moment. It won't take long. I urgently need your help. Um, all right. What's your question? I can spare a minute. Great, thank you, teacher. I need to improve my English, especially my pronunciation. I find this the most challenging aspect of learning English. You might be right. English spelling has remained fairly consistent, but the way we pronounce words has evolved, making pronunciation a real challenge for language learners. I understand your concern. Yes, it's frustrating when people don't understand what I'm saying, even though I know the words and grammar. I completely get that. But good pronunciation involves more than just how words and letters sound. There are other equally important aspects to consider, such as intonation, the tone of voice, and stress, which words and syllables carry more weight when speaking. All of these factors contribute to good pronunciation, but don't confuse them with having an accent. That's reassuring. I was worried that I needed to sound exactly like a native speaker. Not at all. In the UK, the USA, and other English speaking countries, there are various accents, and people with those different accents can still be considered to have correct pronunciation. When you're learning English, you don't have to sound British or American. That takes off some pressure. I'm from Spain, so I have a Spanish accent when I speak English. That's perfectly fine. In fact, many native speakers enjoy hearing English spoken with a French, Italian, or Spanish accent, for example. So, you can work on your pronunciation so that people from all over the world can easily understand you. I'll give you some tips to improve your pronunciation. Please pay attention. Listening to authentic speech examples is the most obvious way to enhance my pronunciation, right? Exactly. There are numerous ways to do this. You can watch a movie in its original version, listen to podcasts on topics that interest you in English, or find other methods that work for you. You mentioned shadowing. What is that? Shadowing involves listening to a short sentence or phrase and then repeating it afterward while trying to imitate the sounds, intonation, and word stress. It also helps you observe how your mouth and tongue move when you speak. So, it's like acting, trying to mimic all the movements and sounds? Yes, in a way. Shadowing can be very helpful especially when watching movies, listening to podcasts, and different types of videos. And once you've practiced shadowing, you can record yourself speaking. This might involve repeating a short phrase you've heard or engaging in a longer speaking task, like describing a picture, for example. The key is to do it consistently. You also mentioned the phonemic chart. What is that? The phonemic chart, or International Phonetic Alphabet, IPA, is a visual representation of different sounds. While it might seem strange and almost like learning a new language, it can significantly aid your pronunciation, especially because English spelling doesn't always correspond with its pronunciation. For instance, consider words like laugh or enough. It can be challenging to guess their pronunciation without some guidance. Learning phonetic symbols from the start is important, you say? Yes, you don't need to reach an advanced level to begin learning phonetic symbols. You can start early and give it a try. Most dictionaries provide phonetic transcriptions of words, 
which can be immensely helpful in mastering pronunciation. What about physical exercises to improve pronunciation? Absolutely, different languages have distinct sounds, and our mouths adapt to those sounds. Some sounds may be physically challenging for us, as they don't exist in our native language. For instance, the th sound in three can be tough for many. To overcome this, you need to practice such sounds regularly. The more you practice, the easier it becomes. So, it's like training your mouth just like you would in a new sport or dance move. Precisely. The analogy is apartment practice helps your mouth get used to forming new sounds. For example, with three, you have to put your tongue between your teeth and make the sound, but this can be challenging initially. That's why it's important to repeat it many times. You can do this anywhere, even when you're on a bus, in a taxi, or taking a shower. Speaking slowly is also essential. Yes, many English learners mistakenly believe that speaking fluently means speaking fast. However, speaking too quickly can reinforce bad habits and make you sound nervous or indecisive. Speaking slowly gives you time to breathe properly and think about what you want to say next, making you sound more relaxed and allowing you to focus on making your English sound fantastic. Singing English songs can help too, right? Absolutely. Singing English songs can be a fun and effective way to practice pronunciation, relax, and work on your rhythm and intonation. Since you don't need to construct sentences from scratch, you can concentrate on improving your pronunciation. There are even methods to learn English through songs and movies, but that's a whole other topic. I'd love to learn more about that. I'm glad to hear you're enthusiastic about exploring new ways to improve your English pronunciation. Learning through songs and movies is a fantastic approach, and it can be a very enjoyable one. You can start by choosing songs with clear lyrics and gradually progress to more challenging ones. Movies, especially with subtitles, can also be a great resource for understanding how words are pronounced in different contexts. That sounds exciting. Can you recommend some songs or movies to start with? Certainly. For songs, you might want to begin with classics like Yesterday by the Beatles or Imagine by John Lennon. These have clear lyrics and are great for practicing pronunciation. For movies, you can start with family-friendly films or those with simple dialogue. Animated movies like Finding Nemo or Toy Story often have clear, well-pronounced English. As you become more comfortable, you can gradually move on to more complex films. Thank you so much for all this advice, teacher. I'm feeling much more confident about improving my English pronunciation now. You're very welcome, Robert. I'm here to help. And I'm glad I could provide you with guidance. Remember, consistency and practice are key. Don't be discouraged by initial challenges. With time and effort, you'll see significant improvement in your English pronunciation. Feel free to reach out if you have more questions in the future. I appreciate your encouragement, teacher. I do have a couple more questions. Are there any specific techniques or exercises I can do to improve my pronunciation while using songs and movies? Of course, Robert. To improve your pronunciation with songs and movies, here are some techniques and exercises you can try. Watch a movie or listen to a song with subtitles, and then repeat what you hear immediately. This can help you mimic the pronunciation and rhythm of native speakers. When practicing, don't rush. Pay close attention to how each word is pronounced. Try to imitate the native speaker's pace and intonation. 
Use phonetic transcriptions to break down the pronunciation of words in songs and movie dialogues. You can find these in dictionaries or language learning apps. Record your own pronunciation and compare it to the native speakers in the songs or movies. This will help you identify areas where you need improvement. Choose short clips or phrases from songs or movies and listen to them repeatedly, then try to repeat them exactly as you hear them. There are various apps and websites designed to help improve pronunciation. They often provide interactive exercises and feedback. Practicing tongue twisters can help with specific sounds and improve your overall pronunciation. Remember, it's essential to be patient and persistent. Pronunciation improvement takes time, so don't get discouraged if you don't see instant results. Thank you for these practical suggestions, teacher. I'll definitely incorporate these exercises into my learning routine. One more question. Is it better to focus on American English or British English pronunciation, or should I try to learn both? That's a great question, Robert. The choice between American English and British English pronunciation depends on your personal goals and preferences. Here are some considerations. Consider why you want to improve your English pronunciation. If you have a specific reason, such as work or academic requirements, focus on the variety of English that's most relevant to your needs. Some learners aim for a more neutral or global English pronunciation that doesn't favor one accent over the other. This can be useful for international communication. Ultimately, it's a personal choice. Many language learners start with one variety and later branch out if needed. The key is to be consistent in your choice and practice to become proficient in that accent. If you ever find it necessary to switch or incorporate both, you can do so in the future. I hope our viewers found this conversation helpful. If you want to continue improving your English, please subscribe to our channel and share this video with a friend. If you'd like to support the channel, you can join us or click that super thanks button. Thank you for your support and take care.